how to make a paludarium. In this video, I will be teaching you how to make a paludarium from scratch. Now you may be asking yourself, what is a paludarium? A paludarium is a type of vivarium that incorporates both terrestrial and aquatic elements. So guys, before we get too far into today's video, I just want to take a moment to thank Anis and Zoomed Labs for their incredible generosity in sponsoring this video and making this paludarium build a possibility. It really means a lot to me and I'm sure you know it'll mean a lot to the animals going into them. Stay tuned for that video. Well, let's get right into it guys, you know the drill. So here are all the products that Zoomed has provided me with to make my paludarium. We have everything from the new 36 by 18 by 36 paludarium model, lots of light fixtures, different types of filters to make this thing clean as possible, some really cool paludarium products, plenty of cage decorations to amp up the aesthetic, and lots more where that came from. And if you guys are looking for the same products to build your paludarium with, I'll be sure to provide you with links to purchase them in my video description. Now, before we do anything to start this build, we need to leak test our enclosure. This is an incredibly important step that can be easily overlooked. You need to fill the enclosure's water feature to ensure that it was properly sealed during manufacturing. The last thing you want to do is set an enclosure like this up and find out at the end when you're filling it up that it has a leak. I recommend filling the enclosure and letting it sit overnight before emptying out again. Now that the paludarium has been leak tested, we're ready to attach our background. To create our background, I will be using two quart tile boards, which will be secured using silicone. Remember to only use S1 silicone, as this is pure silicone that is devoid of harmful mold inhibitors, which have the potential to harm your animals and plants if chemicals leach into the build. We'll start by generously applying globs of the S1 silicone onto the back glass panel of the paludarium tank before firmly pressing the tiles over the silicone. Once tiles were set, I gave the silicone 24 hours to cure before proceeding with the design. The next day I placed the tank on a small table my father graciously helped me build for this purpose. Now that the background is in and our paludarium is on its stand, it's time to bring this masterpiece to life. I decided to start by installing my two light fixtures as I wanted to have ample lighting while working on the scape. I installed the zoom ed timer, set up my lights, and voila! Let there be light! As naturalistic Vivaria has become increasingly popular, Zoomed has worked hard to design innovative products to facilitate the process of creating and maintaining Paludarium Vivaria. This is Zoomed's Paludarium platform, a product that makes creating a land area in your Paludarium super easy. Simply assemble and decide where you want it. All you have to do after that is fill it with your preferred substrate mix. Here is most of the hardscape I'll be using. We have an assortment of aquarium stone, cork bark rounds and flats, as well as a few larger branches of maple wood I collected in a pesticide free environment. The next step is envisioning your work of art. You need to test various layouts to see what looks and feels right to you. Take your time with this. I know I did, as I probably spent 20 minutes deciding layouts and even changed a few things later on, but I'm getting ahead of myself. At this point, I had decided I was ready to fill up the paludarium using several jugs of reverse osmosis water as well as a few jugs of tap water. My original plan was to not have any substrate in the aquarium out of fear that the larger lizards I intended to house in here were going to produce too much waste. I was going to just have a few potted aquarium plants in the enclosure and leave it at that. That was until I found out that I could safely use pool filter sand as a substrate alongside my canister filter. Had I made this decision prior, 
I would have started with a dry scape, just so you all know. Would that have been easier? 100%. C'est la vie. I had to improvise. Next, I needed to install filtration. For this build, I'll be using the Zoomed Macro 75 that they gave me. This is a fantastic external canister filter. It has a slimline design that allows it to fit in tight spaces, which was super convenient because I wanted to house it behind the enclosure on my small table. It has a double filtering system with internal biological recirculation. And this baby can filter 265 gallons per hour, which is pretty sweet. I must confess, I didn't feel confident enough to drill holes through the glass walls to install my filter that way. And it probably would have made my life a lot easier. But instead, I drilled the lid of the enclosure to allow the passage of my intake and outflow lines and place my filter behind the enclosure. It gets the job done. Now that our filtration is running smoothly, we're going to bring our water to a tropical fish habitable temperature using the Zoomed Paludarium Heater 100. This is one of my favorite products by Zoomed. The sleek designed heater is fully submersible, has a digital temperature display, and even shuts off if removed from water, which is a great safety feature. Its compact size means that it can be tucked away in a corner, out of sight, unlike most traditional aquarium heater options. With the filter running and heater temperature maintaining 82 Fahrenheit, it's time to condition the water and get the tank cycling. I'm using Seachem Prime to condition the water and remove contaminants and heavy metals alongside stability, which will dose the aquarium with beneficial bacteria that will kickstart the tank's nitrogen cycle, helping control ammonia and nitrate levels in the water. Friends, the paludarium is taking shape. I've given it seven days to cycle and allow for beneficial bacteria to colonize the filter and aquarium environment. Now it's time to bring plant and animal life into the enclosure. I've selected a few plants I think will do really well in the aquatic half of this vivarium, such as Madagascar lace, Aponogeron madagascariensis, Macrosorum teropus, Rotala rotundifolia, Anubius barteri, Taxophyllum barbieri, Limnobium lavigatum, and Cabomba caroliniana. I've selected a few terrestrial plants I'm confident will thrive in this enclosure. These plants have been thoroughly washed and or grown several months in my portable greenhouse. Firstly is pothos. Pothos is an incredibly hardy plant. It can be grown in soil or even simply dropped in the water. This plant will be used to fill a lot of the empty space and will also be systematically grown in the water to help facilitate with the removal of excess nutrients I also planted a nice rex begonia, begonia rex culturum, to add a splash of color to the enclosure. I'm hoping for some really nice foliage in a few months. I've cut some stainless steel wire to shape into pegs I'll be using to fix vine-like plants against the quartile background. This will help keep the plants secured to the wall until they hopefully grow onto it themselves. I planted some creeping fig, ficus pumila, in the enclosure with hopes it will eventually conceal the paludarium heater's power cord. This will take time, but I'm sure it'll be able to do the job after several months of growth in these optimal conditions. As I continue to plant the terrestrial portion of the paludarium, I also worked on laying out the rest of my cork and a few branches. I wanted to create moistened retreats for the future inhabitants to retreat to, so I used sphagnum moss and leaf litter to achieve this. I wanted to give the impression that a plant was growing out of the wood, so I took a Calathea mosaica cutting that I had grown and wrapped it in a sort of burrito I made. This consisted of a bit of substrate mix surrounding the plant, wrapped in moistened sphagnum moss, then tied off with a rubber band to stay held together. I gently placed this bundle of chlorophyll joy into the large hole in this cork tube. Ferns can be intimidating as terrarium candidates. Many fern species can be quite delicate, but my experience has been that lemon button ferns, Nephrolepsis cordifolia duffy, is a very hardy choice. I love the Jurassic Park feel they give to an enclosure, so I'll be adding one of these to the space here. Now it's time to add a few Zoomed Repti vines. Take a look at how dynamic the potential uses are for this product.
paludarium is looking great, but I decided I really wanted to conceal the paludarium platform. For this I simply hot glue gunned a few strips of tree fern fiber to the face of the platform. I don't know about you, but if you ask me, this makes a huge difference. Animals. Animal life adds magic to a vivarium. These inhabitants can bring so much joy to anyone admiring an enclosure in your home. Whether it's watching fish zip around the tank or watching shrimp pick through moss, there is so much to admire and appreciate watching animals go about their lives in the environment that you've carefully and lovingly crafted for them to thrive and live in. There really isn't anything quite like it. I chose to stock my paludarium with the following fish species, Neon Tetras, Paracherodon anessi, Chinese Mountain Minnows, T. albonubis, and the active Pandagara, Gara flavatra. I also added a small group of Panda Corridoras, which are Corridora Panda. For invertebrates, I added several shrimp species, including a mono shrimp, Caridina multitentata, and red cherry shrimp, Neocardera davidi. Shrimp do a great job of cleaning up organic matter in the enclosure. In fact, one night I noticed a newly added neon tetra had unfortunately passed, but the shrimp are quick to the scene to consume the body and keep the water nice and clean. Friends, there you have it. This is the fantastic result of some incredible products being combined with creativity, imagination, hard work, and a love for plants and animals to build a really beautiful paludarium. I hope you enjoyed and learned something from today's video. Please consider subscribing down below and don't forget to ding the notification bell to know when my next video comes out. If you're wondering what is going to live in this enclosure, Here's a hint, but you'll have to wait for the video. If you have any questions about the build, definitely drop them down below in the comments section and I'd be happy to answer them for you. Once again, a big thank you to Zoomed for sponsoring this video. And as always friends, I look forward to seeing you guys in another video again soon.